everyone. Thank you for attending this session. It's really great to be here. Um, my name is Sandeep. Um, I'm an engineer on the ad event platform team at Reddit. And I have Kasim with me, who's um, an engineering manager on the advertiser success team at Reddit. So we're going to talk today about how Reddit built um, an audience forecasting product for our ads uh, customers and how Druid played a very key role um, in implementing that feature. So we'll go into a few sort of Druid specific aspects of the implementation, and then we'll also talk about some of the lessons we've learned um, while building this. Yeah, so what is Reddit? Um, so Reddit's a place online where a bunch of conversations can happen and you can go find the communities um, and interact with people who are interested in the same things that you are. Um, so we sort of call ourselves the front page of the internet. Um, and here are some, like very quickly, here are some numbers um, that um, just to illustrate that Reddit's a pretty big website. So we have many active users doing all sorts of things like posting, um, engaging in discussions with the comments, um, or just lurking. So um, we sort of need to keep the scale in mind whenever we're designing um, a new product. So sort of a theme we'd like to um, touch upon during our talk is that the Druid lets you do a lot, right? Um, it's a very powerful use case, um, very powerful data store for. You know, we found it really powerful for a bunch of our use cases, but also um, it lets you do a lot with very little. Yeah. Getting a little cute, but um, the 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 idea is we found that with sort of a really well tuned cluster and some tooling, um, we're able to run pretty lean and scrappy. Um, so we don't have a huge team, um, you know, few folks, and we're sort of able to punch above our weight thanks to Druid um, and the folks that imply. So yeah, so let's get into it. Um, here's Kasim to talk about audience sizing. Okay, let's talk about, about what's audience sizing. Uh, but before we jump into audience sizing, there are a few things we need to understand uh, are important. Um, first of all, we need to make sure that we understand what is, uh, what are, what is direct response advertising and brand advertising? So direct response advertisers are those advertisers who care about conversions whenever they go to a certain platform. An example of that is like most of the app install campaigns. For example, there is a new startup. They want to make sure, make sure that people, when they see their ads, they click on them, they install the apps. So they want users to do a transaction. So they want to do a conversion for them. Number of impressions are important, reach is important, but basically what they are interested in is the actual conversion. On the other hand, brand advertisers, they care about, they care about impressions. So they mostly worry about how many users you have on your platform and how many users they can track on your platform, how many users they can reach on your platform, sorry. Um, an example of that is Google. Google, I think most of their campaigns are brand, brand campaigns because they just want to make sure that people know about their products instead of they don't want you to install the apps in most of uh, their campaigns. They want you to just know that there is an application from Google. Similarly, all TV advertisements are brand advertisements because there you have a certain message, you see a certain message, and then you make a decision. You go to a store, you buy a product, or you go online and you subscribe to a certain thing. Uh, brand advertisers care about care more about the number of users that they can reach when they come to a certain platform. Uh, now, let's say you are Amazon or Netflix or Facebook or Google and you come to Reddit and, and, and you want to spend your money on Reddit because you know that Reddit has a certain amount of users that are not available on any other platform. So you want to target those users. You want to make sure you want to reach those users. You want to send your message to those, those users. What you will need to know beforehand, you know, Brand advertisers care about two things. One is frequency. Uh, frequency is the number of impressions that one user will see of their ad. The second thing they care about is reach. That is the number of unique users they will target. Let's talk a bit about both frequency and reach now. Uh, as I said, frequency is the number of impressions per user. Uh, they are important for campaigns because mm, advertisers want to know how many times their message will be reached to a single user. Uh, 
And if an advertiser don't want to like target a user more than a certain amount of time, they can put frequency capping on that. So it's important that they know beforehand what will be the frequency of their campaign. Similarly, reach is the number of unique users they can target. You know, the more the reach is, the more unique number of users brand advertisers can target and the more confident they will feel in spending money on your platform. You know, so it's directly related to uh, the revenue, you know, uh, the more confident advertiser are, uh, the more, uh, you know, what you promise that if, if you can deliver that, you know, advertiser will feel more confident and they will give you more business, you know. Um, a few examples, uh, you know, just take them as examples, like, like, let's say a brand advertiser come in and they want to know, they want to reach the number of users, uh, you know, in Canada who are interested in dating. Uh, and let's say another advertiser come in and they want to target, but they want to like send their message to all the users who are interested in finance in San Francisco. Um, a music group, let's say they want to send their campaign to the to the users who are interested in K-pop on Reddit. Um, now, before they start their campaign, they want to know what is their reach, you know, so that uh, when the campaign ends, they know what their ROI is on Reddit. So that's a really important number. Now, one thing to note is that it's not a simple formula. It's, there is no like one formula through which, by which you can just try to calculate all type of, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, these three examples are totally distinct. Uh, their, their users are totally different. Their behaviors are totally different. For example, uh, the people who are interested in sports, they just come online mostly when the sport, sport event is happening. So at that time, you will see the traffic spikes a lot. But on the other days, they are pretty much flat. You know, they just like come in, do like maybe one or two visits and then go back to their daily daily works. Uh, on the other hand, the people who are interested in finance, they are very active on the weekdays. But on the weekends, they, they, their traffic is pretty flat. So there is no single formula through which you can know uh, that, hey, Hey, this is a formula you put in your formula and here is how you can get like the targeting you need to look into the existing data you know and to look into the existing data you first of all need to record the data and we already do that but so let's take a small example before jumping into how we solve the problem um, an advertiser usually come to to this page they enter the campaign name they select the type of campaign and then the next page asks you about uh, the targeting your targeting criteria what type of user you want to target uh, as you can see the graph on the right side that's our product uh, that shows the audience size that uh, is based on your targeting criteria so you will see the user will select sports as soon as they select sports your audience size changes from 185 million to 24 million. These, these are the number of users we have over a month, uh, you know, uh, historically. Uh, then you select San Francisco. So the number of users who are interested in sports in San Francisco are almost like, you know, 800, 900 million. And, and this type of answers, advertisers need to know before they can actually jump into spending on your platform. Now you understand the problem. Uh, let's talk about the solution. Uh, when we went to whiteboarding, we the the one thing we were sure about was that whatever happens, in the end, we had to go back to our existing ad impressions data to generate these stats because there is no other reliable way. Even if we have to write like a machine learning model, we, we want to make sure that that existing patterns are already there in our system. Uh, and whatever formula, whatever model we need to write, that will be on top of that data. At Reddit, we save this data in either S3 or BigQuery. Um, so we thought like, sure, let's, let's go to our impressions data and try to find out the reach and frequency from that data based on all the existing criteria. But to understand how we did that, it's important to learn, first of all, the, how we record the data and what, how the data look like, uh, the impressions data. So whenever we serve an impression, uh, sorry, an ad, uh, a user sees an ad, as soon as they see an ad, we generate a bunch of events. Uh, their engagement is also recorded. We send it to our backend, uh, you know, our impression collector pipeline that actually consists of a lot of services. It collects that impression and then save it to BigQuery as well as S3. Um, so Anytime any interaction happens, we have that interaction saved against the user ID and some profile information and some uh, ad related data. Uh, 
uh, on uh, on BigQuery or S3. You know, so that data is already there. Uh, this is how that data looks like. We have timestamp, location, subreddit address, user ID. Along with that, we have a few other fields as well that we did not intentionally include in the, in, into this table, but there are a bunch of other fields as well. For example, device types, device OS, desktop, mobile, et cetera. Um, now the challenge with uh, with this problem is that the, the three rows you see in this table, uh, this table is not small. The, this table has almost a billion, like a few billion entries every day. Uh, so select like writing account query or writing account distinct query uh, to find the unique number of users out of this table is very tricky. So the challenges were that the solution need to be fast. As you see the product, the product is front facing, front end facing. So uh, it has to be, you know, sub two to three seconds latency at max. Uh, we have to consider the large data set because if we don't do that, obviously uh, we'll not be able to give the accurate estimation to our, our advertisers. So they will lose trust over time. Uh, accuracy was important. Obviously uh, we could afford to be wrong or be inaccurate by like 10 to 15 to 20%, but we did not have the margin to be wrong like 70, 80% all the time, because if an advertiser notices that they will not be able, they will not feel comfortable spending their money again on our platform. So, so we had to be accurate up to a certain level. Uh, the fourth challenge was that the solution should be scalable. So that means, what does, what, what does that mean is that uh, as Reddit grows, we'll have our product will advance. So we'll have more types of targeting. For example, maybe in the future, we'll do career-based targeting, targeting. Maybe in the future, we'll do, um, you know, frequency capping. Maybe we'll do bid or budget-based targeting. Uh, you know, uh, in that case, if we want to find the reach or the unique number of users or impressions, uh, our system should be able to handle that scale. You know, it should be easily scalable. So these were all the challenges, but um, now how did we solve this problem? And what was the actual solution? We have Sandeep to talk about that. Go to Sandeep. I'll have laid out what the problem looks like and some of the challenges. Let's talk about the actual solution. Boom. Okay. So, so I drew it in the first place, right? Um, so we're using, well, we, at the time we were using Druid for uh, another use case, uh, which is basically a data store for um, our advertiser reporting dashboard. Um, this dashboard at azure.com, basically it's custom, as I mentioned, is to serve our advertiser customers. And it's where they can um, create advertiser campaigns and um, track their performance and so on. So the dashboard uses impression data, right? Um, and we're very happy with the performance. Um, we see sub second latencies for analytics queries, large intervals. Um, you know, seems like something to consider. Um, so we have a post up on our on Reddit's engineering um, blog, with a lot more details about how um, that feature was built. I've linked it here on the slides. Please go take a look. Um, so yeah, so here's that audience uh, sizing data model um, that Kasim mentioned earlier. This is what the reporting data model basically looks like, right? Um, as I mentioned, it's like a super set of what we need. Um, and that's fine. So um, let's just go into a little bit about the cluster setup for as it looked at the time. Um, we use Imply Cloud for uh, hosting our clusters and managing our clusters. Um, it's an example of what I'm sort of calling like a high uh, leverage tool um, manages all of our cluster operations, um, cluster setup, and um, tweaking uh, the actual cluster configuration and stuff. Point and click. Um, we're pretty happy with it. It works fine. Um, we ingest in, second thing is we ingest in batch mode. Um, that's mainly due to sort of legacy reasons. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the ingestion uh, in the next step. Um, but batch um, mode is sort of good enough. Um, and then we in uh, we use Airflow to orchestrate all of our ETLs. Um, pretty straightforward, nothing fancy here. A um, couple of customizations um, in, the, in, in sort of the operator and the hooks, um, basically to work with 
samarbejde ind også der kan være lidt engineering specific setups, like secrets and so on. Here's what the pipeline looks like. Pretty box standard, nothing fancy again. Um, and now let's go a little bit about, into about some of the constraints, right? Um, small team, limited budget. Um, the data platform team at the time of building or starting this work was basically three people, right? Um, and Drew was one of the many one of the many components that we own. Um, also regarding the limited budget, so we run, we use Implied to run our clusters, and our contract at the time put a pretty hard cap on um, cluster size, and we were sort of getting close to that cap when we picked up the audience sizing problem. Um, to the IPO company, we're still, we're still getting our feet wet with Druid, um, so that sort of explains the limited budget aspect. Um, just want to point out that maybe. Um, so some of the questions you folks might have now or later as we go through the presentation, a bunch of them could be answered by not enough bandwidth and or not enough budget to sort of scale the cluster um, horizontally. So this was a pretty significant constraint because most problems, as you folks all know, uh, with Druid can be sort of handled by scaling horizontally, right? Um, query performance takes a bit add hardware. Um, you want to increase your retention um, intervals, add some hardware. Um, you want to tweak your disk to RAM ratio, you probably almost always want to scale up. Um, yeah. So give me a little bit of what the implementation look like. Um, so again, we already all we already have a cluster with the data required for audience sizing. Um, we found that the queries for um, the reporting use case perform really well, and we think that the queries for audience sizing will be very similar. It's not the same. Um, so here's what the first, roughly what the first uh, implementation looked like. So account distinct um, from the reporting data source for the, one of the examples that um, Kasi mentioned earlier. Did not go well. Um, we, you know, even the required response time was three seconds and we saw um, actual response times of like upwards of 10 minutes, um, taking multiple minutes. Um, so here's some clues as to why, right? Uh, that been, uh, we could figure out, which is that the data modeling very important. Um, the reporting data source backs our advertiser dashboard. So that basically means every incoming query from the dashboard is obviously scoped to the advertiser who's viewing um, there, who's doing their stuff. Um, the forecasting queries had didn't have such a natural filter, first of all, because any permutation um, um, was acceptable. And also, whatever the natural query was, not natural filter was, definitely wasn't advertiser ID. Like we didn't even have advertiser ID in the, the, in the data model for audience forecasting. Secondly, the segmentation wasn't quite set up for audience sizing to work properly. So the reporting data source is ingested batchwise hourly, and then we run auto compaction only for segments that are older than seven days. That basically means for the latest seven days, we have a large number of segments. Um, the reason why we do the seven day offset is uh, we found, um, so some of our ingestions for each hour can target um, the last seven days of, um, of intervals. So when we were running auto compaction for like, let's say an offset of a day, um, ingestions, it would lock with some of the batch ingestions, you know, lock on a segment, um, which caused, our uh, ingestions to sort of time out. And also it wasn't like the, the, the delays or the, while it was waiting for the lock to be released, the time wasn't a, a fixed amount that we could just set a time out, right? Um, we could just set a retry. Um, so we just headed off on compact. It was working for the reporting um, use case. So we felt, you know, a little stumped. Um, 
some of the constraints I mentioned earlier again came into play about not being able to scale um, maybe as much as we wanted. We knew that we needed to, um, the solution didn't lie or couldn't lie in scaling for us. So we had to look for other avenues. Um, so this brings me to yet another high leverage tool, which is the fine folks that imply. Um, I don't mean to imply that the imply folks are tools, but that we found anyway. Um, so they bring some deep expertise to the table. Um, some of the folks that we'd worked with during the reporting um, use case uh, worked out really well. Right. So yeah, so we hit them up um, to see what we could do. And then they suggested data sketches could be the way to go. Um, so real roughly, I think there's uh, been many um, presentations about data sketches in this summit, previous ones. Um, so yeah, I don't need to go too much into these. One of the key points is it supports set operations such as union and intersections. So intersections are huge for us, right? Um, intersect the set of folks who are interested in sports and are from San Francisco, or um, everyone's interested in sport, both from the United States and Canada. So union there. Um, and specifically data sketches on doing great support query time, injection time. And also nice part is that it's very relevant to the problem at hand because approximations are okay. So estimates are fine if and if, if and only if the error margin is bounded, right? We don't want arbitrary errors to show up on each query. Um, they need to be bound. Um, so yeah, so next step, we were like, let's go for it. Let's try um, query time sketches on the existing data source. Um, which again, you don't need. This just comes out of the box. Um, the result, right? Better, but not remotely good enough. Um, so we can sort of guess why. So query time sketching helped compared to the count distinct, but still not good enough. So then the next step was to consider ingestion time sketching. Um, so you ingest the data into a separate data source, building the sketches as you go. A um, little better. Um, oh, way better, but not good enough again, um, 25 seconds. Um, so we felt we were on the right path, but we hadn't quite got it yet. Um, so then we took a closer look at the ingestion spec. So, so what, what did we want, right? We wanted statistics about given user ID and then count distinct about all the user IDs that did similar things, right? Um, so we were sketching on the user ID, but then we also had the user ID in the dimension spec seemed intuitive um, or obvious. Um, but then that meant that every row would have, or it would be a, a user ID level rows, right? Because the user ID is present in there. So obviously massively affected row. Up. So we weren't getting, um, so leaving the dimension, the user dimension out from the spec, then got us to sort of roll up. Um, that was required for the uh, for adequate performance, and yeah. So the final response time that we landed at was about one point five seconds, um, which is good enough. Um, and what the final configuration of the clusters look like is: so we have forecasting data source being ingested to batchwise daily um, on the same cluster that the existing reporting use case was in prod. Um, we did hash partitioning. Um, thought maybe get into that a little bit later. And then we did, we got the sketching right with the appropriate spec and the roll up. Awesome, right? Good to go. Um, not quite. So forecasting now was working really well, but reporting was taking a hit. Um, so we deployed, um, I wish I had a nice graph, but this was way back. So I don't have the SLAs right now, but, um, the reporting SLA began to um, slowly suffer. Again, not immediately that we could just roll back forecasting and then figure out another way, but over time, right? Um, so now we had to figure out a way um, to get for reporting to work again without scaling up. Um, so we tried a few things that seemed, again, sort of the obvious ways to go, which was um, query laning, didn't work for us. Um, we already had tiering. We decided to tweak some of those to see if you know we could do it. Didn't quite work. Um, 
So that now brings me to clarity, um, yet another high leverage tool. Um, it's provided by Imply, and we use it a lot. Um, so it basically lets you sort of um, profile your cluster, basically, right, to see what's happening under the hood. Um, yeah, so we took, we were rooting around, we took a look at some of the stuff. And the one thing interesting that popped out was that the response sizes for forecasting and reporting were markedly different in terms of size, right? This should sort of roughly tell you um, what, what, what the differences look like. So forecasting was an order of bytes um, and reporting was in sort of the hundreds of kilobytes. Um, so this was, uh, this was interesting. So then um, it meant we could do this, which is um, uh, do it again, as you all know, provides you a whole bunch of knobs and whistles to um, so the imply folks pointed um, this out, which is you can set this configuration on the brokers such that you can sort of cap the maximum size um, of a response that would get cached, right? So we set this to an order of bytes so that forecasting um, queries would get cached and reporting ones would not. So that now meant that we could, we were getting pretty good performance on uh, forecasting and we could then move or shunt some of our resources um, into making the reporting, uh, improving the reporting uh, query performance. So we tweak the tiering a little bit so that reporting would get happy. So this solved the SLA problem for the time being. And also like what we found, it was quite interesting is that it's not easy to test. Like you make a caching change and you try to see immediately on the same cluster that it was working, right? You issue a query, stuff gets cached. It's not really easy to um, um, to invalidate the cache. Um, so you, you gotta wait <laughs> a little bit. Um, and, but then the thing that ultimately worked, well, like was, what was good enough was that we saw it worked and um, the results were good. Um, so yeah, so let's get into a few of the learnings. Um, First one is obvious, the data modeling matters. Um, do the columnar data store um, that you, I believe hundreds of columns seem to be working fine for some folks, um, but the trade-off there is roll-ups, right? So you're trading off on the sort of the access of generalizability versus performance. So the more columns you have, you can use, like it might satisfy multiple use cases, but then the cardinality of the dimensions um, that you have in your data stores has huge implications on the depot performance. Um, partitioning. So um, for us, hash partitioning um, sort of saves the day. So dynamic partitioning doesn't let you do forced rollout. Um, so which was very important for us, um, given that we couldn't re-roll them up after the fact. Um, Single dim hashing just didn't cut it at all because um, the sort of the natural filter that I mentioned of, of the country, they're uh, very largely US biased. So those segments were massive. Um, it didn't get quite that performance if you wanted. So it, hash partitioning um, worked. It took a bunch of tuning um, and also the actual ingestion state. Like, so on one day, like 24 hours worth of ingest, ingestion sort of take six hours, right? And there are some clear trade-offs, not trade-offs, but like some clear balancing to do where you don't want too many subtasks because that would that would mean you have way too many um, partitions, sorry, segments. Um, and then you also want to tune the number of shards or the hash bucket. Um, so we found after multiple iterations, um, the config that worked for us. Next, sketches, like this is again, we found it, I found it slightly counterintuitive that you leave out the dimension, but um, it makes sense now. Oh, it makes complete sense now. So we left out the user ID, got statistics about the specific user ID. Good to go. Uh, yeah, so roll up, roll up, roll up. Um, and then finally, shared cluster, right? Super convenient, but not necessarily a good idea. So 
the tail of that obviously a single cluster is far easier to maintain can be quite optimal in terms of resource usage right so like you don't need a whole new set of middle managers or a whole new set of query brokers if the bottleneck's not the query uh, not the brokers um but maintaining um like the different use cases on that cluster can be um, a bit of a challenge um yeah so just to recap some of the high leverage tools that we found imply cloud and clarity um more than happy with those um and then expertise folks that imply as i mentioned great to work with and then do it by itself right so it just let us reuse an existing setup and prototype and ship the feature uh like pretty bad like pretty new feature right um with um like impressive velocity right and it also um as i was sort of saying earlier it lets us run pretty lean right we have a small cluster handling a pretty big scale um right so not just good good enough um Our uh, data is currently hashed on. Uh, we we currently use hash partitioning, uh, and 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 we basically sliced our data on the base of country. The reason was we thought that country will always be the first dimension on which the user usually filters on. Uh, but the downside of that is that hash partitioning makes the injection ingestion really slow. Right now, our batch takes uh, almost six hours to ingest twenty four hours of data. um because it has to do two passes um so this was like one of the performance optimization that we had to do uh, in order to gain the gain the response time on the client side on the request side uh now to make the things better we are trying to add streaming as a source let's see how our current implementations change uh, and let's understand how sketches perform as well Uh, what we learned is that we are very much tuned for performance uh, now our objective is to uh, tune for the cost to basically uh, figure out how we can save some of the icus uh, in the future uh, we are also um, now building machine learning models on top of our existing reach model um, basically we are we are, we are we are trying to build like a neural network kind of a thing where we train the model on uh, the bigquery based data and then basically use reach from druid as an input feature to that particular model in order to figure out how uh for example conversion changes according to uh according to the budget or the bid value so so this platform is also helping us to develop that as well similarly we are also trying this this uh, uh this data ingestion have also helped us uh do another product uh that you saw in the very start of the example slide to uh to help us suggest the bid to the user as well so uh, if a user want to know what is the ideal bid size uh, we recommend them just because that data also exists in druid right now overall the summary is that uh, druid has allowed us to reuse an existing setup uh, you know prototype and and ship new features at 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 very high velocity we can create like a new field uh, in the matter of days instead of months um it is pretty lean we are a very small team and our cluster is also like pretty small right now but we are handling a large scale we currently have um, uh, you know advertisers like uh we have we have pretty big names uh, in in advertisement you you can easily see uh, if you are a reddit user uh, we have learned uh, we have learned a bunch of things uh, shipping this feature that uh, will inform our next features for example uh druid is versatile but to a point so you cannot just like uh use it for you cannot map any type of use case on that maybe we did not choose uh, uh the right data store but so far it have been serving us serving us really really well but i'm very sure that at certain point it's going to uh you know just stop and say like hey you need to go back to the to the whiteboard and and we are ready for that day uh, you know so that's why we say like it's versatile but not uh you know for every use case uh we also learned that uh, you know we should avoid the uh, the shared clusters as uh, much as possible and imply imply cloud th that makes us uh, easy to clone the existing clusters most of the time uh, we uh, need very little help from our sres uh, uh, to do that well that being said 
we are hiring um uh, please go to this url and if you're interested in how uh, in, in the more products like the one we just showed you there are like infinite fleet of product that we have already worked on and uh, if you want to see the magic if you think like something we are not doing correctly and you want to fix it please join us here uh, we are always hiring uh, if you have any questions just let us know and here is our email addresses <laughs>